How's it going, guys? Electron Man. Well, we're going to start back on some shortwave radios. I hope you're excited. It's so dang hot that I can only do this late in the evenings, and uh, it kind of limits me a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, we got uh, we picked this up over at a consignment store here. Check this baby out. Check this out. Transatlantic Zenith. Uh, Made in 1960. I already found some schematics for it. Pretty excited about it. It's going to be a fun one to uh, to see what we can get with it. Um, I have already plugged it in and put it on the Variac over there, and it's really basically drawing nothing. I'm hoping it's maybe just a bad cord or something like that. But uh, currently, it doesn't. It doesn't light. It doesn't actually have lights from what I read. But it doesn't power up at all. Doesn't do anything. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's in pretty good shape for for its age. Actually, at this top part right here, this actually unscrews, and it didn't come with it, but there's a little uh, cable that you can connect to this, and you put this up like in a window, and this little piece here actually screws off, and it's part of an antenna. I have to see if I can find that little uh, cable that plugs in, in between it and antenna, but I'll use my long wire outside anyway, but uh, kind of just to make it complete. I have to look around and see if I can find that, but there's the front of it. Go ahead and roll around and show you the back. It's kind of cool. This one here, it just uh, makes two hands, but... There's the there's the back of the unit. I bought it because whenever I opened the back up, it looked pretty clean in here. Uh, tubes look nice. Well, not a whole lot of dirt or anything. It actually had a battery pack that this goes with that's not in here. It didn't include it with it. And from all the ones that I've seen online and everything, that's pretty common. Um, I'm sure the battery corroded and went to the wayside a long time ago. But uh, it's pretty cool that uh, that it was able to do DC back in 1960. But I, I'm not going to worry about that. I just want to get the radio up and running. I also found this inside of it, which I thought was pretty cool. It's probably pretty valuable. Uh, it's actual original operating guide, and it's in really, really, really good shape. Um, not any water damage. Um, really nice. Oops, sorry here. Wait. Let's see. I was just curious what the warning says. What does Zenith give as far as a warning on this? Maybe it's lifetime warning. I'll call Zenith and tell him that I, I need him to fix my radio. Only 90 days, wow, back in 1960, okay, well, not so much for that broad idea, but anyway, i got to figure out how to get this guy out of the case, um, that's going to be a challenge in itself, I haven't quite figured that out, I'm going to do a little looking and see if the manual shows anything on how you get this thing out, but uh, yeah, that will be the first step, we'll go ahead and pull it out of here and uh, get her out and do some initial checks on 120 volts, uh, see if this line here is actually even feeding 120 and kind of get a first look at what's underneath here as far as components, electric, you know, caps and stuff like that. Uh, from the from basic conversation, though, it's pretty uh, pretty clean little old guy. Um, actually, the antenna's cool, too, and it's not broke, but it's actually got a little... You turn it, and then it unlocks, but it's a big old long antenna. And uh, it's not broke, which, which shocks me. You know, a lot of times on these traders, they see them broke, but... Uh, I just thought that was kind of cool. And see, it's got a little clasp there that actually locks in, locks it down. But uh, anyway, this is probably uh, this is gonna be part one. I just kind of wanted to go over the radio with you, show her what she looks like, what I got going here. I'm trying to. Going here. I'm trying two cameras too. Hey, hey up there. I want to see how two cameras does too, as far as the coordinates. I might play with uh, shots back and forth, and uh, not sure how I will uh, edit that. But uh, anyway, I don't even know why I'm telling you that. It's just kind of. I added another GoPro up there. I'm just going to see if that gives me some cool shots that I haven't been getting. But uh, I think the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to have to do a little read and see if we can figure out how to get this thing off. It's uh, out of its chassis. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm, well, I don't worry about what I want to lay on the side. Let me put it on the side. I don't want to be damaging those dials or anything up front. Um, I see two screws here and here. I'm going to have to get a. Okay, you can't see on this side, but you can see on this side. Uh, first thing we're doing is we're trying to lose it. There's a two three eights on the bottom side of this wood piece here on this base, so it should get us a good start. I, I got my little, just kind of a hodgepodge of socket here. Let's see if I can find one that'll fit it. It's gonna be tight fitting there. Uh, what size is that? I think I'm three eights. Maybe five sixteenths. That five kids five sixteenths here. Let me go ahead and let's 
see what we got here as far as taking these two out to start with. I'm sure those have to come out. Kind of in an awkward spot too. Hell, I can't get my arm in there anyway, so. tightness where it's almost too tight to turn by a finger but not so tight the ratchet will work oh that's frustrating yeah, I'm getting it really need a camera behind me to get this basically I'm just reaching up in here every one of them it's looking the other one hopefully it doesn't fall down whenever I loosen it I don't think it will They're both going to be that way. Okay, where's number two? Looks like just like number one. As far as the two bottom screws there now, then let me go ahead and open this front. I got to open it. <laughs> Are these going to come off easy for me? Oh, we don't want to break anything. Well, that almost sounded like that snap, but it didn't shoot. I'm be real careful pushing it. That's some thin stuff right there. That front lens there. Okay, cool. They came off. Get these two knobs off. I don't know what that powdery stuff is. I see it on bake light stuff a lot. I don't know. Somebody can tell me what causes it's almost like a soap film it gets on it. It cleans off, but it's just weird. It gets uh see them all over the buttons too. I can clean it off. I just I wonder what causes that bake light to have stuff that comes out that looks like soap. Okay. Two knobs out. It looks like that's only two on the front. Uh, on the back here it looks like we did antenna plugs in. That's good. Unplug the antenna. Hey. Hey, it's trying to come out as one piece. What's it hitting against here? Oh, true. That antenna is going to be in the way. Ah. Kind of awkward. But it's it's doable. Looks like they definitely made it to come apart, which is what something new manufacturers should could pick up on. Hint. See, make have to stuff like cell phones. Oh my God! Talk about making them hard to. Okay, yeah, there she is. Boy, that's a that is a hardy antenna right there. Wow, that sucker weighs a. Uh, That is one serious antenna. I mean, that is heavy duty. 1960, I guess it was made when that. I mean, that right there that probably weighs two, three pounds. Anyway, enough about the antenna. Let's see if this chassis will slide out of here now. Be very careful. I don't want to break it. Like one, one something's grabbing here. baby what do you got holding you oh should have been paying attention I almost hurt that plug that uh that one little plug wire there we're out check it out guys check it out 
here's the unit. I love it. I'll be able to line it and everything right out of the case and then slide it back in there. I like that. Now let's take a look at what we got on the back side of this. Woo, something got hot back there. Yeah, that's definitely why she's not working. Yeah, it looks like a diode and I'm guessing a resistor there. I don't know what the heck this thing here with three terminals is. If you've seen that or not. Maybe you guys can tell me. I've never seen that component before. Uh, it looks like it's got a 12 microfarad uh, wax cap in it. A couple of other capacitors in it. Not a whole lot of caps. That's good. Got a 600 one here. Looks like this part right here is the part that really fried. Looks like it might have shorted out. Interesting. Okay, well, probably stop right there. I'm gonna go get those schematic out and see what we got going on here. Um, this definitely broke off of the uh, tab terminal. There's actually another one I can move it over to, so that's not a problem. Need to check that component there. Definitely something shorted out here. It definitely got some wires. Looks like a lot of it's to the DC circuit, like somebody didn't know what they were doing or something there. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm not going to sit here on the video and have you watching me stare at it for 30 minutes. But anyway, that ought to be enough for content one. There, uh, there she goes, pulled out. We definitely know where to chase down. There's the... Uh, nasty part looks that we need to start kind of sorting out and figuring out what we had happen down in here actually had a little micro fire it looks like so yeah, it's going to take a little cleaning up for sure nothing major though nothing major okay well I hope you uh, enjoy this series this ought to be interesting huh? see what we can do about bringing it back no promises you never know I don't have a whole lot invested in this so if I can, it can just become deco art. If I can get her back up and running, that'd be super cool. Anyway, if you get a chance, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day out there. This is Electron Man.